It said that if you build it, they will come. Well, let's do just that. So, as the first rule of business as the newly appointed city planner, we're going to need some sidewalks. Fortunately for us, we aren't going to need any cement though, because any standard plane will do. No, not that plane. I'm just going to subdivide this bad boy and save just the end of it to be used as our road. Now we need a little bit of extrusion to prop up our sidewalk, add a few loops, and bevel them to get the cracks. Don't go stepping on any though, because mom can't afford any new medical bills. Before I get too far into things, I want to set up a camera to start composing my shot. This will help me frame my scene from the start, so anything I do from here on out is going to ideally contribute to the overall look. To go for that isometric look that makes low poly more like wow poly, I'm going to set my lens type to be orthographic and play around with the orthographic scale. This slider will be how we move our camera in and out. So to visualize our building before we, you know, build it, I'm going to use a cube to block things out. I'm thinking about 2 meters on the length and the width, and about 3 meters for the height. For the technique we're going to use, your building can be whatever ratios you want, but for this particular workflow, we are going to want to ensure our dimensions are at whole meter integers, and you'll see why in a minute. Now I've got to adjust my camera to better fit my scene. And trust me, you're going to be doing that quite a lot throughout this process. To contain the features of this building, and to help hide some seams and poor geometry connections, I'm going to create corner supports via a cube. All I'll need is a tall, thin, and rectangular cube that I'm going to squish into the corner and then instance for the others, so I only need to change one when I need to shake things up a bit. The first step that they teach you in architectural school is that in order to trap people in your buildings, you're going to need to get them inside the building. So we are probably going to need doors. Well, call me old fashioned, but to do that, I'm just going to use another plane, no, not that plane, rotate it on the X axis and reconfigure it to be exactly one by one meter. I'm also going to place the origin at the bottom left from my perspective and I'm ready to go. Now I can go ahead and just instance this and place it right at the bottom of my building. With any modeling, you know the drill. Loop cut here, extrusion there, get rid of some faces, and inset some others. How you go about creating your door really is up to you, but I prefer to work with using instances because it allows me the freedom to mess up, the thing I'm best at really, and see how things are going to look when composed into my scene without having to do all of the work directly in that visual space. Jeez, am I not done modeling yet? Come on, guy. Wap. I'll also separate the door to add some edge loops so that they won't be added to our door frame. Once I'm happy with the door, I will join it back to the frame because we need doors to keep the people in, remember? Then on the instance piece, I can throw an array modifier to fill out the other side. And so I just got word from my advisor that we need something called windows? Uh, I'm not too keen on adding any, but he says we'll get sued if we dump, so I'm also not too keen on getting sued either. I set up our windows the exact same way as we've seen before, using a plane, making it one by one meter, and realigning the origin. I'll bet you thought I was going to say not that one this time, eh, and drag out an unfunny joke? Well, you are mistaken. I can be unfunny with different jokes. For this piece, I want to have two separate windows, so I'll need to split it down the middle. I initially make my windows a little too tall, but again, it's all about your preference. I also add a little arch to them to make them look a little fancy. I add sills to the windows via two cubes, and I duplicate some of the overhang geometry with a solidify mod to spruce them up a little bit more. Some middle connectors are also made to add some visual intrigue, uh, because honestly I have no idea what kind of structural support they actually provide otherwise. Lastly, I want to create some kind of running trim along the bottom of the piece. So I'll add some loops and push them around like they owe me money. I want to make sure the bottom and top edges of this plane line up as well. Otherwise, we are going to get some tiling errors when we try and line this up with an array modifier or with other pieces of geo. I create a single window asset using the exact same process because I wanted to develop a different look for the side of the building too. 
I also noticed that I didn't like how the pieces sat flush with each other, so I made sure to add a little extrusion to help break them up just a little bit more. For the bottom wall, I just wanted a flat face, so I just used, again, you guessed it, an icosphere. No, I'm kidding, I used a plane, and I made it fit the 2 by one meter gap. With that side now completed, I went and instanced the pieces to be used for the other side of the building as well, and then duplicated the plane to serve as a flat face for the back wall. So I guess if we're going to actually trap people inside our buildings, we're going to need to also shelter them from the elements such as rain, right? That means I'm probably going to have to build a roof. Man, these people are needy. Well, to do that, I'll start with a cube and place it over top. Boom, problem solved. Thanks for checking out this CG cookie tutorial. As always, I've been Chunk. This has been... Wait, what? What do you mean that's not going to cut it? Why don't make an actual roof? So let's slide the top down, add some loops as retainers, and do some insetting. Inset the top and extrude inwards to give ourselves some space. Next, I'm going to attach our pillars by insetting and extruding as well. Nothing really special here, but it's an area for you to play around with and maybe add some cool designs if you think they fit. I'm also going to quickly add a water spout down the side of our building because I've been told water damage is pretty nasty. And while we want to trap people in our building, we don't necessarily want to drown them. Another one of the elements I've just been made aware of is fire. Uh, apparently people need a way out in case of one, and although I've already been kind enough to provide a front door for these people, uh, I'm being told that ain't gonna fly. So a fire escape it is. All it really consists of is a floor and railings. The floor is easy enough, I just squish a cube down and add a hole for the stairs. Then I make a simple cylinder to be our rails, and I add a cube to be the railing. I'm just going to array it to send it up to the second floor because I guess they need one too. Now to create the stairs, all I really did was take another cube, squash it down, and array it downwards to fit our space. This one may take some fiddling around, so be ready for that. Finally, I developed a ladder by stealing some of our rails and using rectangular cubes as the sides. Nothing fancy, but incredibly low poly. To round out our modeling, I wanted to create some extra detail for our flat walls. I wanted to give the impression that this is a brick building, so I made some bricks and placed them around. This part was incredibly manual, but if you have a more procedural way of placing these around, I would definitely do it that way instead. Now it's material time. I go into material preview mode so I can see how my materials look real time. This part will also be rather tedious, and may benefit from applying materials as you go, rather than all at the end. But again, that's your discretion. The extent of the materials involves me creating and applying materials, changing color and roughness values, and then occasionally changing the metallic values for some of these assets. There really is nothing too heavy here. However, low poly tends to be very colorful. So in terms of palette, I tried to steer down the center of saturated enough but not too blown out. Now that we've colorized our scene, we are going to need some light. I've swapped into render mode and added a sun lamp. I don't want to get too crazy with lights and I think a simple directional light is all that I want for this particular scene. Probably going to want to bring the intensity up, change the color to something a little warmer, and I'm going to uncheck scene world because I want to use one of the built-in HDRIs for my environment. By enabling contact shadows, we will also be able to better capture shadow information within the smaller areas where geometry connects. Activate all the post effects your heart desires, maybe change the look of our color management to maybe something like medium high contrast, make sure our scene is framed perfectly, and give it a quick viewport render. Oh yeah, actually no, I want to bump up the light a lot. Yeah, there we go. Now, by extrapolating all of the ideas used to build this single building, we can go ahead and start developing larger cityscapes. Well, I hope that this has shown you some ways you could tackle an urban WoW Poly scene. Thanks to everybody that voted on this video, and please take a look at our community tab to be able to vote on what I have to do next. 
Subscribe to us to keep up to date on our latest Blender education. And as always, I've been Chunk. This has been Let's Build It in Blender. Later, skater. Did you know that the capital of Ireland is the fastest growing city? Because it's Dublin every day. What do you call a city without... <laughs> what do you call a city without a Swedish furniture store? I have no Ikea. <laughs>